5G will help take the Indian education system to the next level, says Prime Minister Modi. Australia to restrict work hours for foreign students from July 2023. BSF conducts Bharat Darshan tour for Punch Rajori school children. Researchers at IIT Rurki develop breath-based cancer detector. TET candidates stage protest demanding appointment in schools. GD Goenka University to take strict action regarding clashes between Indian and Nigerian students. Good afternoon and a warm welcome. You're watching Education News Network where we get you the latest developments in education at the top of the hour. This is Nithya reporting from ANN and the daily stories are The 5G telecom service that was launched this month will take the Indian education system to the next level, said Prime Minister Narendra Modi yesterday at the launch of the Gujarat government's Mission Schools of Excellence project in Gandhinagar district. PM Modi said the project will upgrade school infrastructure in the state with 50,000 new classrooms and over 1 lakh classrooms in 20,000 government schools and make a huge difference to the lives of children and their education. This occasion is going to serve as a milestone for a developed India and for a developed Gujarat, he said. This initiative, PM Modi highlighted, was made possible by the recently launched 5G service that will go beyond smart facilities, smart classrooms and smart teachings. It will take our education system to the next level, the Prime Minister said. Some people say we have seen 2G, 3G, 4G and now 5G. And so what's the big difference? If I were to explain from a layman's point of view the benefits of 5G technology, I would say if 4G is a bicycle, then 5G is an airplane, PM Modi said. Adding that young students can now experience the power of virtual reality and the Internet of Things at school. Using this technology, a teacher can impart real-time education to several schools and villages through the online mode. Now, the best education and content will reach everyone. Students of villages will be benefited the most because of this initiative, he said. Australia is planning on restricting the number of hours foreign students are allowed to work. According to the latest statement from the Australian government, unrestricted work rights in the country for student visa holders will end on June 30th, 2023. The statement said, from July 2023, the number of working hours for international students will be capped again. The number of hours will be revised with a view to finding the right balance between work and study. Last month, the Australian government had announced it was extending post-study work rights for foreign students in industries with the workforce shortage. In January this year, Australia had temporarily given relaxation in working hour restrictions for student visa holders to address skill shortages in specific industries. Immigrant students were permitted 40 hours a fortnight for work before the relaxation. With this change, bachelor's degree holders will be allowed to stay in the country for four years, master's graduates for five years and PhD holders for six years. The current limit for foreign undergraduate students to stay in Australia is two years. Master's graduates are allowed to stay for three years and students pursuing doctorate for four years. Recently, Australia had also allocated a new budget of 36 million Australian dollars to be used for the improvement of visa procedure for foreign students. The country is likely to see a rapid increase in study abroad applications following this change. The Border Security Force Jammu Frontiers is conducting a nine-day-long Bharat Darshan tour for children hailing from twin districts, Pooch Rajauri of Jammu region, PRO BSF Jammu said, Deputy Inspector General BSF Rajauri DS Sindhu flagged off nine days Bharadarshan tour of children hailing from remote border areas of Pooch and Rajauri region. 35 children will get an opportunity to visit various prominent monuments in Jaipur, Rajasthan. A BSF official said while interacting with children, DIG BSF Rajauri said that this tour will not only give them an opportunity to enhance their knowledge, but also will help them to better understand Indian culture, customs and traditions. A group of professors from the Indian Institute of Technology, Rurki, have developed a breath-based cancer detector, which works on the principles of colorimetry, which is the scientific technique that is used to determine the concentration of colored compounds in solutions. The team includes Professor Indrani Lehri, Professor Partha Roy, Professor Debrupa Lehri and researchers in their groups, as per a statement by the Institute. 
The institute has also signed technology transfer for the BLO detector with Tata Steel. BLO detector will be important for screening a large pool of the population who are susceptible to any of these three types of cancer. A positive result in this test will ensure a quick visit to a doctor for a detailed diagnosis and treatment of cancer. This will have a huge impact on increasing the survival rate of cancer patients, specifically of these three types of cancer. The device has undergone an initial clinical test at a cancer research institute in Dehradun, India, with a sensitivity and specificity of 96.11% and 94.67% respectively, said IIT Roorkee in its statement. Professor Indranil Lahiri, lead researcher for the BLO detector, said this is a quick, handy, pocket-friendly breast, lung, oral cancer screening device and a person just needs to blow into this device. Immediately after the test, the person can match the color of the substrate with the given color code and understand the chances of having any of the breast, lung and oral cancers. Hundreds of candidates who claim to have cleared the teacher eligibility test in 2014 staged a protest on Monday outside the office of the West Bengal Board of Primary Education in Salt Lake, demanding that they be given immediate job appointment letters. They said that they had appeared for two interviews after qualifying the written TET 2014 examination, but did not get jobs via its panel, which according to the board has expired. Stating that they would not want to appear for a fresh examination announced by the government for this year, the candidates demanded that they be appointed as teachers in West Bengal government-sponsored and aided schools as per the previous merit list. Why should we appear for another exam, having already cleared all rounds in 2014? A woman candidate participating in the protest said. The G.D. Goenka University has said that it will take strict action with regard to the recent clashes between Nigerian and Indian students on campus. There was tension in the university premises located near Serna after clashes broke out between Indian and Nigerian students on the football ground on Friday. Six students were injured in the incident and both groups involved in the clashes got FIRs lodged against each other at the Serna city police station. 22 students have been suspended after CCTV footage confirmed their involvement in the clashes, said the university in its statement. The parents of 20 of the 22 students met the university management on Tuesday. During the meeting, the university management apprised the parents of the involvement of their children in the clashes. University Registrar Dhirendra Singh Parihar said, If the students are found guilty in the internal report, strict action will be taken against them. Some of them can even be expelled from the university and some may be forced to leave the hostel. In the future, any kind of sports event will be held in the presence of officials. The security system will also be strengthened in the university. That's all for today. Thank you for watching Education News Network. For more such videos, do log on to our website, theann.com. And don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Signing off, this is Nitya.